Okay, uh, this uh, chapter 22 is about the short run and long run effect of inflation on unemployment. Now, back in the early 1960s, late 50s, early 60s, Philip put forth this uh, proposal that there was a trade-off, an inverse trade-off between inflation and unemployment. Now we can see this on a graph where the y-axis is the inflation rate, the x-axis is the unemployment rate, and we create a line, to, that, a curved line, that allows us to see an inverse relationship, meaning that when inflation rises, unemployment goes down. When inflation goes down, unemployment goes up. So the idea being that if we inflate the dollar, that puts more money into the economy, that increases jobs because there's more spending, and therefore there will be less unemployment. In the short run, if the public is unaware of the inflation, there appears to be a benefit as prescribed by the Phillips curve. This means that if presidents can work together with the Federal Reserve just prior to election, maybe a year, a year before the election, and they can have the inflation rate turned up a little bit, and that will, within a year or two, cause unemployment to go down. Now, once the public figures out what's going on, that the inflation rate is higher, then the unemployment will go back to where it is. But for a period of time, um, the, uh, the, the presidents were using this as a way to decrease unemployment. And for quite a few years, it moved, as you can see in the graph, a light right along the Phillips curve as we would expect. However, what happened was the public started figuring this out. And when they did, it suddenly stopped working. Milton Friedman added his piece to this. He said, there is another line that needs to go on the Phillips curve. And that is the natural rate of unemployment. The economy has a certain rate of employment that it wants to be holding at. Now we don't know what that rate is at any given time. It changes depending on what's happening with technology and shifts in different work requirements and so forth. And so uh, we just know that there is one. And so what happens is that the economy, if you try to move the unemployment rate below the natural rate, then it will try to move back. And so if you increase the inflation rate, hoping to reduce the unemployment rate below the natural rate of unemployment, then what will happen is if you stop increasing the, the inflation rate is you'll now have a new level of inflation and it will move back to the level, that same level, but now on the natural rate of unemployment, meaning that the Phillips curve shifts out to the right. Now, in order to be able to get low, uh, lower in unemployment, you have to go even higher on the inflation rates to be able to get it back down again, which then, as a result, shifts the Phillips curve out to the right again, meaning you now have high unemployment and high inflation. And this is what happened for several years until we ended up with Nixon and then finally with Carter, where we had extremely high unemployment, around 11%, and extremely high inflation, around 13 to 14%. We've talked about this before. This was what they called the misery index by adding the two numbers together. So the misery index is the combination of uh, unemployment and inflation rate. And that period was referred to as the period of stagflation. So you have stagnation and inflation. So you have unemployment and inflation that created the stagflation period. The result was Jimmy Carter was a one-term president and he was thrown out in a landslide victory by Ronald Reagan, who came in and immediately solved that problem, but with great difficulty. In order to reduce the, kind of the inflation rate and unemployment rate, Reagan had to uh, change the Federal Reserve's habits of printing money and get it back down to a reasonable number. Now, the problem is that there was an expectation on the part of the consumer and, and business people that the inflation rate was going to continue to go up or at least stay at the high rate that it was. 
And so Ronald Reagan held a press conference along with the president of the Federal Reserve. And the two of them announced that they were going to fix the inflation problem by taking it back down to 2% a year. Now, they knew that when they did this, it was going to put the economy into a recession. But it was hopefully going to not be too bad, too, it would be short, because Ronald Reagan was going to have to run for president again in three years. So they announced this, and they so thoroughly convinced the American people and the businesses that this was going to happen, that they, they stopped giving uh, big increases and in raising prices at the inflation rate of 13% and went to 2%. The only thing is, Reagan and the president of the Federal Reserve did not, in fact, lower the uh, inflation rate to 2%. They actually kept it at 13% for one more year and then lowered it to 2%. Uh, so they were able to fool the public into thinking it was 2%, even though it went up 13%. And as a result, the recession, which did occur, was much milder and much shorter. So was that the right thing to do or the wrong thing to do? Well, assuming most people do not want a deep recession, it was probably the right thing to do. Since then, the uh, Federal Reserve has been maintaining a 2% inflation rate uh, very steadily. And the result is we have eliminated stagflation and the misery index has stayed fairly low. This is now something that presidents uh, no longer want to do, uh, print money.